Good morning. Welcome to New Bethel Baptist Church. We're glad you are joining us this morning. We would love for you to join us. So sing along with our praise team. Grab your Bible and be ready to study God's Word in just a moment. Let's worship together. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring For in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God of Christ the Lord come to him eternally by the strong cord overcoming daily with the spirit sword standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the of God. One more time, here we go. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's roll, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing.
I heard a commercial on the radio this week. It was an insurance company. It started off talking about what kind of doctor treated what part of the body. It sounded like the person had a, a bad knee. So an orthopedist for your knee, a, a physiotherapist for your balance, a psychologist for your emotions. And then they, they, said, they said the most amazing thing. They said, at our insurance company, we have discovered that the parts of the body are connected. If your knee hurts, you limp when you walk, and that can affect your emotions. Then the announcer said, the parts of the body are all connected. What? Imagine that. The parts of the body are all connected. What an astounding discovery. Discovery. No, wait. Didn't we already know that? Wasn't there a, a, a kid song? I remember from a long time ago. The leg bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the hip bone. And the song goes on. The commercial made it seem like this insurance company had made a new discovery. <laughs> Excuse me. The reality is... We all knew that. They were just stating the obvious. Hopefully, you have seen the obvious connections over the past several weeks. We've been talking about the to-be attitudes, those characteristics of kingdom citizens. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit and the merciful and the pure in <laughs> excuse me, uh, and the pure in heart, uh, eight characteristics in all. And then for the past two weeks, we have seen Jesus's real world application of those characteristics. Jesus said, we b believers are salt. We are light. As I was thinking about those eight characteristics, and our living as salt and light, I wanted to make sure that we made the connection that those characteristics and their application could be a reality for us today. What's the connection? How can we develop and live out the characteristics? How can we be salt? How can we be light? The connection is by faith. Now, Jesus said with faith, we can move mountains. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes, sometimes I'm the mountain that needs moving. If I'm going to live up to the standard Jesus set in Matthew 5, if I'm going to live up to the expectations of the Lord, I've realized that I can't do those things I can't be those things by myself. Now, I've said this repeatedly as we've gone along. If we could, if we could, <clears throat> if we could see Jesus face to face, we would have no problem <clears throat> realizing exactly how poor in spirit we actually are. If we could see the perfection of Jesus, if we could see what it cost him, to, to die for our sins, we would mourn our sin continually. The reality is we just don't stop and actually consider how deep the sacrifice of Jesus, how deep, how great the love of God is to offer us grace and mercy and send a part of himself, his son Jesus, to pay for something that to pay for something we broke. If we could live in that reality of seeing Jesus 24-7, I think we would find living up to the two Bs a lot easier, maybe a little easier. But we can't. At least I cannot. So how can I be salt and light when, when I have a hard time just being a better version of me by myself? Like I said, I cannot. But by faith, I can. Today, I want us to look at an example from the Old Testament. 
the person we're going to be looking at is called the father of faith. Is he a perfect example? No. Is he the first person ever to have faith? No, not that either. He is the, the father of faith because he's an important part of our faith. He's a, he's a prime example from Scripture. So, so much so, such a good example that when the discussion of faith came up in our study of the book of Hebrews, the first example with, with very many details is this man. His name is Abram, and we find his story in Genesis chapter 12. So turn to Genesis 12 with me. We're going to look at verses 1 through 8. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went, excuse me, Abram went, same guy, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all the possessions they had gathered and all the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring... I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai or I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for uh, the opportunity again to look into your word. Our prayer today is that you would show us how we can live by faith. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By faith. When we think of Abraham, oops, excuse me again. God didn't change his name until Genesis 17. When we think of Abram, we think of him like some biblical superhero. Uh, he is kind of a hero. He's one of the Old Testament patriarchs. He is the one people in Jesus' day looked up to the most. Uh, Abram is the 19th descendant of Adam, the 10th descendant from the line of Shem, from Noah. He's referenced in the Bible 287 times. So he is kind of a big deal. Abram is considered the founder of three different world faiths. Jews, Muslims, and Christians look back to Abram slash Abraham as the father or one of the fathers of their faith. Now, if we could go back in time and move next door to his family, we might find that, that Abram is, is really a, a, a pretty normal guy. He was normal in a lot of ways. He, he had problems. His, his brother died tragically, and he kind of adopted his nephew. Uh, his wife was barren, which was a, a bad stigma in their community. He acted cowardly and lied, pretty big lies, concerning his wife on three different occasions. But, but that does not mean we would not want Abram as a friend. Uh, he was a normal guy, if if normal includes the fact that uh, he was not perfect, but was a really good guy. He had issues, but he, but he almost always overcame those issues. The reason we want Abram as a friend is because he had this contagious trust. We call it faith in God. Whether we say walk by faith or live by faith, 
Abram is a, a pretty strong example. So let me show you some of the ways Abram was living by faith. By faith, Abram listened to God's voice. The Lord spoke to Abram. Now, I don't know what that looked like. It must have been fairly significant. In the Bible, we see God speaking to various people in various ways. To Moses, it says that God spoke to him as a friend speaks to a friend. To Solomon, God spoke through a dream. To Ezekiel, God spoke through visions. To Daniel, God's hand wrote on a wall and Daniel interpreted what was written. How did God speak to Abram? Well, Genesis doesn't tell us. But Stephen, in the book of Acts, gives us a little bit of an idea, a little bit more details. In Acts chapter 7, verses 2 and 3, uh, Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me, the glory of God appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran and said to him, go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. The glory of God appeared to Abram. Now, Abram was a, uh, he was a pretty normal guy back then. He was a lot more he was a lot more like us than, than we might want to admit. Uh, he lived in the city of Ur. Uh, Ur was a large metropolitan city on the banks of the Euphrates River. It was a center of commerce and trade. It was an important city for the region. But it was a pagan city. In the center of town was a temple, and in the center of the temple was a, a ziggurat, a tower, where sacrifices were made to the moon goddess, uh, whose name happens to be translated from their language to Hebrew as Sin. Her name was Sin. That should tell you something. Abram and his family were very much a part of that community. Joshua gives us a little insight into their lives. In Joshua 24, verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham, and of Nahor, and they served other gods. They were trying to fit in. They were trying to get along. They were being tolerant. Doesn't that sound like America today? Aren't we supposed to go along to get along? Aren't we supposed to be tolerant? At some point, though, I think Abram came to his senses, remembered his heritage. We don't know who was influential in Abram's life, but there were people who had been there. For example, there were a lot of people alive when the Tower of Babel events happened. They saw what happened when men got too big for their britches. It's even possible that Abram had met and talked with Shem, the son of Noah. Shem lived 600 years, a really long time. Their lives overlapped by more than 100 years. So how would it have been to have heard stories of the time before the flood from someone who was there? At, at some point in Abram's life, the, the tolerance became intolerable. Jewish tradition asserts that Abram, while in Ur of the Chaldees, was persecuted for his uh, disgust, for his abhorrence of idolatry. And, and hence, therefore, God called him away from his native land. God spoke and Abraham listened. Next, we see that by faith, Abram obeyed God's word. God said, go. Abram went. Now, we have to stop a minute and appreciate what happened. God said, go, and Abram went. He didn't argue. He didn't 
reason. He didn't seek a second opinion. Abram obeyed God's word. Have you ever moved from one house to another? Have you ever moved your family from one country to another? It's, it's quite the undertaking. God says move, and Abram starts packing. There's several things we can note about this move. Abram left the place where he was born. He had lived there for over 60 years. He left his country. All that was familiar, everything that was comfortable, Abram left. The, the, the places, his favorite places to shop, the, the people he met on the street, his favorite ice cream shop or whatever. He left it all behind not knowing if they even had ice cream in Canaan. He, he left his house. You might say he was getting another house. Well, no, not if you actually look at his life. Uh, Abram, we would say today, he went off grid, way off grid. He left his house, and for the rest of his life, Abram lived in a tent. Now, it was a, it was a pretty nice tent. It was a, a pretty elaborate tent. But it was still a tent. Here's what the book of Hebrews says about Abram's obedience. Hebrews 11, verses 8 through 10, says, By faith, Abram obeyed when he was called to go out to, the, to a place that he was receiving as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to the land of promise, as in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. And then it says this, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. According to Hebrews, Abram left the city of his birth. He left a city, and from that day, for the rest of his life, he was looking forward to another city. City, not an earthly city, but a heavenly one. Abram heard God's voice. Abram obeyed God's voice. And by faith, Abram was promised God's blessings. In, in general terms, the, the blessings God promises to Abram can be, um, can be broken down into four categories. So look back at Genesis 12. Verses 2 and 3 contain the, the blessings. Abram was to become a great nation. Abram was to have a great name. He was to receive great blessings. And Abram was to be a great blessing. Abram was to first to become a great nation. Now this is a this is kind of a two-part blessing. It involved population, and territory. Abram and Sarai were childless. Genesis 11.30 says, Now Sarai was barren. She had no child. An important part of the blessing was to have heirs, descendants, a, a family of his own. Barren women do not normally bear children. But Sarai was going to. This was something to look forward to. This was something to anticipate. The second part of the great blessing here was the great nation was to be the land. Abram left Ur of the Chaldees and moved part of the way to Haran and, and then headed to... Where are we going again? I wonder if Abram was not the first person to ask, Are we there yet? How would he know when he had arrived? Well, God would tell him. Look at verses 6 and 7, Genesis 12 again. Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So Abram built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Abram 
was going to be a great nation. And he does, in fact, have a great name. Now, his great name's not Abram, but it is Abraham. He, he, God changed his name to that. He's famous for his part in the Bible. He was also famous in his day, famous in history and famous in his day. People recognized the blessings of God and, and Abram's reputation increased. He was, he was victorious in battles. He, he had kings as friends. Abram was also to receive great blessings. Now, we don't know the size of the moving truck that it took uh, the family to get packed back in Ur. You know, if it was just a trailer that they pulled behind the camel or if it was one of those big moving trucks. We don't know. But later in Canaan, he had flocks and herds and workers and enough men to field a company of troops. Abram was incredibly wealthy. But, but more than wealth, Abram was a friend of God. In the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles 20, and also over in Isaiah 41, Abram is called the friend of God. And this is confirmed in the New Testament. In James 2, verse 23, uh, the scripture was fulfilled. It says, the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abram believed God, that's having faith, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. That's from James, the brother of Jesus. Also, Abram got a unique promise as a part of this blessing. God will bless those who bless Abram, and God will curse those who curse Abram. So there was an interactive blessing. And finally, Abram was to be a blessing for the whole world. Now, this was not because he would discover the cure for poverty or hunger or the cure for cancer. The blessing to the whole world would be through his descendant. Uh, the world blessing is Jesus. Through Jesus, the heir of Abram, the curse of sin is lifted off of those who believe in Jesus' name. And all of these things came true. But not all of them came true in Abram's lifetime. Obviously, Jesus was not born while Abram was alive. The land of Canaan did not become a part of the blessing until over 400 years had passed. In faith, by faith, Abram received God's blessings. And by faith, Abram lived. Abram lived by faith. Romans 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abram believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Believing God, having faith. The, the fact that Abram got up and moved, not knowing exactly where he was going or what he would be doing when he got there, is a picture of Abram living by faith. God asked Abram to go on a journey with him, and Abram said, lead the way. Jesus says to us, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So how can we be those things? By faith. You have access to the same faith that Abram exercised. You have God's voice. You, you also have something Abram never had. Do you have your Bible in your lap or sitting next to you? You have God's voice. You have God's word right here. If you are a believer in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. The Spirit's job, according to Jesus, is to, to be our guide and to, to tell us the truth about Jesus and about ourselves and how we can live our life following him. You have God's voice. You have God's word. Like Abraham you can choose to obey God's word. 
Abram could have said, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere unless you tell me where we're going and you tell me what I'm going to be doing and, and you explain to me the salary package and, and is there a, a housing plan? You may or may not know the outcome of where God would lead you. Now, now be careful. God may be asking you to do something uncomfortable. He did Abram. The uncomfortable thing that God may be asking you to do might be, you know, walk all the way across the street and invite that neighbor to church. It might be to, to get up and go help a fellow church member in need. It might be to go and serve somewhere like the, the student ministry, the campus ministry at the local college. Uh, you could obey or you can refuse. If you obey, like Abram, by faith, you have promised blessings. Answer yes, and God may have untold blessings waiting for you. Well, I mean, we know he does. The, the riches of heaven await those who follow Jesus. But your blessings also may be here and now. I just think of the blessing of a the smile on a child's face when you give a gift at Christmas. The, the blessing may be seeing someone you invited to church get baptized. The blessing may be knowing that your immediate family will be with you in heaven. God's ways of blessing are, are too numerous to count. Abram had to decide what he was going to do. And by faith you do also. Will you live by faith? Will you be salt and light? Will you develop the character we saw in the Sermon on the Mount? It, it takes faith. Abram had faith in God and moved. Will you live by faith? Living by faith, like Abram, requires change. In Abram's case, it included a number of big, big, big changes. So if I phrase the question a different way, are you willing to change? Will you face change by faith? Will you live by faith? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity to see this example of faith. Uh, we know that, that from him on, everybody in the scripture looked to him as an example of faith. And so we, we trust that we too can look to Abram as, a, as an example of faith. He didn't always live up to his potential. He sometimes made huge mistakes, which we, which we see in the scripture, which just makes him more human and more us more able to identify with him but he also did great things for you by faith he was obedient he received your blessings he because of his faith was to become and did become a great blessing even to us so father help us to live by faith if if there's someone listening who hasn't done this yet lord i pray that today they would, by faith, receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They would admit that they're a sinner. They would believe in Jesus. And they would confess that Jesus is their leader. They're going to turn their life over to follow him. And also their Lord, they would put their allegiance and trust in him. And Father, if they'll do that today by faith, they will be saved. Help us as we look to the world around us to, to live by faith to go by faith, to face change by faith. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week.